Hello everybody! In this video we're going to be starting on page 43 in your workbooks which is where the week 5 notes begin. So before we jump right into these week 5 notes I want to just recap one of the things that we did last week which was graphing equations. So we were given a grid and we were given one equation and we had to use our slope and our y-intercept to graph a line on the grid. What we're going to be doing today is essentially that same thing but we're going to be graphing systems. Of equations. So it says a little bit lower here that a system just means that there is more than one equation. So you might have two equations that you have to work with at the same time. There could be three, there could be four. In this course, a system is just going to mean two always. But if you do go into future math courses, you might need to know that a system could be three, it could be four. It just means there's more than one that you're solving at the same time. Okay, so the directions say to solve the following system of equations. We're going to talk about what the solution is once we get to the end. But to start, what we're going to do is exactly what it says right here, which is graph all of the lines in the system. So when you're given a system and you have to solve it graphically, meaning there's a graph that you need to graph your um, equations on, you're just going to graph one of them, then graph the other one on the same grid. And again, we'll talk about the solution at that point. So I'm going to start with the top one. So the top one is y equals 2x plus 5. Okay, y equals 2x plus 5. What's nice about that setup is it's already in that y equals mx plus b format that we need in order to start graphing so you don't have to manipulate anything. And we're good to start graphing. So you can use your calculator to graph this if you'd like. I'm going to stick with the M and B option we worked with last week. So that means just stating what M and B are. Remember, M is going to be the number in front of X. So in this case, M is 2. And if you also recall, we want our fraction, or I'm sorry, we want our slope to always be a fraction. So because it's just a 2, I'm going to put it over a 1 to make it a fraction. And then B is the number that's by itself, which in this case is a 5. So to graph any line, now that I know that information, you start at B, which is your y-intercept. So you put a point on 5 on the y-axis. That's your y-intercept. And then from there, you have to use M as your rise over run. So it's a positive 2 telling me I'm going to rise up 2, and you always run right. But it also knows that it's right because it's a positive 1. So from that 5 on my y-axis, I'm going to go up 2, right 1, up 2, right 1. That only gets me two points. Remember, in the last couple videos, I told you you want to put as many points on as you can. Here's the time where you're going to learn why. So just keep doing them in the other direc direction as well, which means you just do the complete opposite. So down to left one, down to left one. Go the whole way. You'll see why that's so significant in just a little bit. Okay, once you have all those points, you can connect them. your arrows on the end because even though your grid ends it doesn't mean your line ends if we were just solving or I'm sorry if we were just graphing one equation we would be done but we're solving a system here which means I have to go I'm only like halfway done I need to go back over here and now graph my other one so my next equation is y is equal to x plus 1 that's also in y equals mx plus b form, so I don't need to manipulate anything. I just need to state what m and b are and go from there. So take a second to practice figuring out what m and b are. Okay, hopefully. M was a little bit trickier for this one, but when there's no number written in front, it just means 1, because it's like 1 times x, which is just x. So my slope is 1. When I turn it into a fraction, it's 1 over 1. And B is also 1. So lots of 1's going on here. I'm going to start on my y-axis at 1. And I'm going to go up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1. I know that's a little annoying. Just do them all. Up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1. Again, you will see why doing all the points is so crucial in just a minute.
If you need more time, please just pause the video, but we're gonna talk about what it means to actually solve these now. So we have a system. You know it's a system because you were given two equations to start with. You graph each of them, and then what you wanna consider is what these points on the line actually mean. So like this point on the blue line, these are all solutions to this equation. The points on this line are all solutions to that equation. If you're solving them both at the same time, you need to find the solution or solutions that work with both of them. So if solutions to each individual line consist of the points on that line, where would they both have a same solution? Again, I'm asking you like you can answer me. They have the same solution where they intersect. So this point right here that I just highlighted in green, I'll even circle it in black here, that point right there is where the two share a solution. So that's where the solution to both of them is. It has to work with both equations to be the solution to the system, meaning both of the equations. Okay, so going over that idea in words right here. It says every line has infinitely many points. So like I highlighted in blue and red on the graph, all those points continue forever and ever. So each individual line has infinitely many solutions. However, how many points satisfy or work with both of the lines graphed? It's only going to be one. Okay, and I'm just gonna add a little note on here for you that solutions to a system of equations is where the lines intersect. A big word here is that intersection, okay? So solutions to a system of equations is where the lines intersect. If they intersect like it's pointing to in that graph, that means it meets both of the lines criteria because that's where they touch, they both share that point, that would be your solution. So to actually write out my solution like it's asking for right here, remember your solution on a graph is always gonna be x comma y. So you need to figure out the x value and the y value at that intersection point. So the x value is negative four and the y value is negative three. So my overall coordinate is negative four comma negative three, and that is the solution to this system. All right, in math practice makes perfect, so let's try that exact same kind of problem over again, but this one's a little bit tougher. So for 168, I have to solve this system using the graph. So I'm gonna start with the top one just like I did before. My top equation is 2x plus 3y equals six, and I immediately have an issue. This is not in the y equals mx plus b form that I needed to be in. So I have to convert it first before I can even graph. Whether you're using the m and b method or the graph and calculator method to graph, you still need y equals mx plus b form. So if my goal is to get this y by itself, I'm gonna get rid of what's being added or subtracted first, which is this 2x, to move a positive 2x to the other side, I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. We're gonna do a lot of this today, so hopefully the practice that we're doing in this video really helps you get that y equals mx plus b form down. Okay, so on the left side, those 2x's cancel. My 3y comes down, my equal sign comes down. Remember, these over here are not like terms, so you can't combine them. You just need to write it how you'd read it. So six minus two x. And at this point I will show you, you can write negative 2x plus 6 instead. As long as that negative stays with the 2, that would be perfectly fine if you prefer that. I just like to bring it down exactly how it's seen so it's not like an extra confusing step for you guys. Okay, my last step to get y by itself is to get rid of that 3. It's being multiplied by 3. So to undo times three, I'm going to divide both sides by three. And remember, when you do that, you have to divide every single piece by three. So these threes cancel, I'm left with the y, which is awesome. 
And now I just do some division. So six divided by three is going to get me two. And then negative two divided by three, if you were to plug that in your calculator because you're not sure, it's gonna get you a decimal and you don't want a decimal. So I'm gonna leave it as negative two over three x. The reason you wanna bring it down as a fraction over a decimal is because that's actually your slope and you want your slope to be a fraction. Even up here when our slopes weren't fractions, we put them over one so that they would be. You always want your slope to be a fraction. So it's kind of nice this one already is. So I'm going to start by stating my M and B, and then I can go over there and graph it. Okay, so we already talked about how this is M. M is always going to be the number in front of X. So your slope for this one is negative 2 over 3. And B is the number by itself, which is 2. Okay, so I'm going to start at 2. And the slope is negative 2 over 3, which means I'm going to rise down 2. That's what that negative means. I know it sounds stupid to rise down, but that's what negative tells us to do. And you're going to run to the right because that's a positive 3, but we're always going to run right. So down 2, right 3, down 2, right 3. And when you don't have any more space over there, up to left 3. And I'm going to take a quick pause because I did forget to mention it previously. You know how I said you want to put as many points on your grid as you possibly can? The reason for that is, and I'm going to show you in this um, purple color, if I just graphed everything to the right, it would have been this point, this point, this point. Actually, I'm going to use black. You can't really see the purple. If I only graphed the y-intercept and then going to the right, like we always start, I would have had all those points, and I would have had these points. If you don't continue on to the left to make sure you get every single point, you wouldn't have plotted this point right here. And it's crucial that you do plot that point because that's where they intersect and it ends up being your solution. So that's the big key here for plotting all of the points. I know sometimes it's annoying, especially for that, um, this one right here with the slope of one and the y-intercept of one. But you've got to find where they intersect. That's the whole goal here. So you have to put as many points as you can. Okay, some people were, might also be thinking, like, you're still going to continue your line like this, and ultimately you'll see that they intersect there. But if you don't use a ruler and you're not super precise, you might end up at the wrong point, and I just don't want to see that happen to you. So put as many points as you can, be as neat as you can, and everything should work out great. All right, so again, that means I'm only halfway through because I've only done one out of my system. So now I need to solve this other one to get it in y equals mx plus b form. And then I'll graph it. So this one's actually a little bit easier to get y by itself. Again, you still always get rid of what's being added or subtracted first. So I'm going to subtract the 2x from both sides so that these will cancel out. My y equals comes down. And again, these are not like terms. So I bring them down how I read them. Negative 2 minus 2x. The reason this one's a little bit easier is because it doesn't have a number in front of it like we did over here. There's nothing there. So we are done. We have it in y equals mx plus b form, so I just have to state what m and b are. Remember, m is the number in front of x. Make sure you bring the sign along with it. So m is a negative 2. I want my slope to be a fraction, so I'm just going to put that over a 1. And then B is also a negative 2 because that's the number here by itself. Okay, so that tells me I'm going to start at negative 2 on my y-axis, and I'm going to rise negative 2, which means down 2, right 1. So from that point, down 2, right 1, down 2, right 1. Notice you didn't intersect yet, so that's why you have to go to the left, up 2, left 1, up 2, left 1, and then bing, bang, boom. Don't know why I said that. <laughs> We hit that point. Uh, 
And remember, your solution to a system is where both equations work. They both work or they both hit at the same point. It's always going to be that intersection point right here. So that point as an x comma y, here's my x value, which is negative 3, and my y value is a positive 4. So my overall solution is negative 3, 4. Okay, so it's a real big review of what we did last week with graphing. You're just graphing two of them on the same grid and then finding where they both work, which would be your intersection point. So building on that, let's do some challenge questions. So for question 169, it says, is it possible to have no solutions in a system of equations? So remember, a system means two. So take a second to think about that. Is it possible to have no solutions? No solutions would mean that they don't intersect. Are there such two lines that never intersect? The answer is yes. It is absolutely possible to have no solutions. It is if you have parallel lines. Okay, parallel lines, their definition is literally two lines. I'll do it over here. Okay, parallel lines is literally two lines that never intersect. That's their definition. So parallel lines, I'm just going to throw in here for you, is that they never intersect. They have identical slopes. They never, ever cross paths. Real corny math joke. <laughs> Parallel lines have so much in common, it's a shame they'll never meet. <laughs> if you laughed at that, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> you weren't giving me a pity laugh. <laughs> All right. Next one, a little bit tougher of a question. It says, is it possible to have infinitely many solutions in a system of equations? So we've talked about what infinite solutions mean. There's infinite solutions on a single line. There's infinite solutions with graphing inequalities. Remember when you shade? If you have that shading, there's infinitely many points that fit in that shading. Is it possible to have infinitely many solutions in a system of equations? So again, a system of equations just means that there's two lines. If you have two lines graphed, is it possible to have every possible solution? Infinitely many. Usually for this question, I get like half the people say yes and like half the people say no. So the answer actually is yes. Okay. If you were thinking no, that's totally okay. I hope this will help explain it to you. So infinitely many solutions. Remember, your solutions are where lines intersect. Okay. Your solutions to a system of equations is where lines intersect. So let's say I draw my first line and it's right here. Then I go to graph my second equation and it ends up graphing right here. Okay, I'll draw it again just so you can see what I did. There's that blue line, there's my first line. If I then draw in this red line, notice they're the exact same line, which means there's a solution here. They always intersect if they fall on top of each other. And again, that continues forever and ever and ever. Okay, so yes, it would be um, two of the same lines. They are constantly, there we go, <laughs> it's doing so good. They are constantly intersecting. In fact, there's never a moment where they're not intersecting if they're identical lines. If it was a challenge question, just to kind of get your brain thinking, typically, more often than not, you're going to see these two lines with different slopes where they intersect at one point, but just know that these are possible. 
All right, so moving on to our next topic for today, still working with systems, which again means two, but we're solving a system of inequalities graphically. So remember when we went over inequality graphing, um, it's essentially the same as graphing a line. You just have things to consider at the end. And those two things were whether it's solid or dashed, and then whether you shade up or down. So again, same as graphing a line. It's the same as graphing a line, but at the end, you have to ask yourself whether it's solid or dashed. And you also have to ask yourself whether you shade up or down. Okay, but the beginning steps are the same as you would do for graphing a system of equations like we were just doing. So I'm going to start with my first one, which is y is less than x plus 1. Luckily for us, it's already in that y equals mx plus b form, so we don't have to manipulate it. We're good to start graphing this line. So I just need to know what m and b are. m is the number in front of x, which is a 1, but I'm going to write 1 over 1 because I want it to be a fraction, and b is 1. Okay, so take a second to graph that and don't connect your points without asking yourself whether it's solid or dashed. Okay, we'll talk about it when we get there. I just don't want you to start connecting it and make a mistake. Why do I give you these questions with a slope of one? How annoying. Remember when you're done going up one right one, you can go down one left one. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Remember when I was graphing it and I said, don't draw the line, don't draw the line. Make sure you ask yourself if it's solid or dashed first. This is why it's so easy to just be like, oh, I'm done with my line, I'm gonna connect it. But I connected mine wrong. Why did I connect mine wrong? Like, why, is, why is my solid line wrong? Think about it. Oh, yeah, I can't believe I did that. But see how easy it is to do? Okay, so this right here, is the symbol we need to consider when we're thinking about whether it's solid or dashed and up or down. If it has the or equal to, meaning it has this down here, which this one doesn't, if it did have it, that would mean it's a solid line. If it doesn't have it, like this one, it means it's a dashed line. Goodness. So I'm going to connect it with a dashed line and do it actually correctly this time. I get so excited about this ruler tool. <laughs> I just did a solid line. Okay, so it is a dashed line because it doesn't have the or equal to, so I'm just gonna say that it's dashed. And then think about it in terms of whether it's less than or greater than. If it's a less than, you shade down. If it's a greater than, you shade up. This one is a less than, so I'm going to shade down. Remember that means towards the bottom of the graph. So I'm gonna be shading this way. I'm trying to make your shading as neat as you possibly can because there's going to be like double shading on this graph because remember, we're only halfway done. We have a whole other inequality to graph. So if you need more time, pause the video. I'm going to jump into this next one, which is 3x plus 4y is greater than or equal to 12. So unfortunately, this one does not have the y equals mx plus b set up. So to get y by itself, you get rid of what's being added or subtracted first, which is the 3x. To get rid of a positive 3x, I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. Notice it's really like that same setup every time to get y by itself now. The more practice you get with it, the more comfortable you'll feel with doing this. So those 3x's cancel. The 4y comes down. The greater than or equal to comes down. And again, here's that same thing where those can't be combined. So I just bring it down how I read it, 12 minus 3x. Okay, y is not yet by itself, so I'm going to divide everything by 4. Now keep in mind when you're working with an inequality, 
There's one other rule when you're solving an inequality that's different from solving an equation. And if it, sorry, it's if you divide by a negative, you have to flip the sign. So for this one that doesn't apply, we're dividing by a positive four. So that rule doesn't apply. I'm just putting it in your head so it's fresh, freshly in your minds. Um, so now I'm going to divide. 12 divided by 4 is 3. And negative 3 divided by 4 is just going to stay negative 3 over 4. It is equivalent to 0.75, but again, I want my slope to be a fraction. So this is y equals mx plus b form. So I'm going to state what m and b are. b is 3. That's the number by itself. And m already is a fraction, which is awesome. So my m is going to be negative 3 over 4. Go ahead and take a second to graph this. <laughs> Don't connect your line right away without thinking about solid or dashed. E, I go down three, right four. Or up three, left four. Okay, once you have those points plotted, consider your sign. Remember, the sign comes from up here, or even what was given, whatever you want to look at. Okay, it is a greater than or equal to. So greater than or equal to, the or equal to tells me it's going to be solid. Because remember what or equal to means. It means every point on that line is also included in the solution. Just like if I had something as simple as x is greater than or equal to 2, it means 2 or higher. This greater than or equal to means this line or higher. So the solid line shows that. So I'm going to draw a solid line this time. And it is a greater than or equal to, which tells me I'm going to shade where? Up. Okay, so from that red line I have, I'm going to shade towards the top. Of my graph. That's why it's so important for you to be nice and neat with these kinds of questions because you want to be able to see the difference in the shading. Okay, if you need more time, again, always feel free to pause the video, but there's a difference in how you solve an inequality or a system of inequalities, I should say. So let's dig a little deeper into this. It says, how many possible solutions are there to this system of inequalities? Before, when we were just graphing a system of equations, the answer was one, because they only had one common point. But now we have shading involved. So when we're talking about the blue, okay, the blue line, my first line that we graphed, the solutions are all within this area right here. Okay, when you're talking about that second equation we did, all of your solutions are within this area right here. And remember, just because it ends doesn't mean it actually ends your infinite solutions. They go on and on and on forever and ever past your grid. So the blue line, or I'm sorry, the blue graph inequality has infinitely many solutions. The red inequality has infinitely many solutions. But how many solutions does the system of inequalities have? When you're talking about a system, remember you have to find the point or points where both of them fit. So if you think back to those little things that I drew in, this is where the red works. I'm sorry, this is where the blue works. This is where the red works. There's a section right here where there's an overlap. That overlap is going to be where your solutions fall. So essentially, talking about right here and so on. It does continue on and on and on. So right here within this little region where it's double shaded, that's where your solutions are going to be. How many solutions fall in that purple shading? Hopefully you're thinking infinite solutions. Okay, there are infinitely many solutions. 
to a system of inequalities simply because that purple overlap there where the red and the blue both share points or share solutions never ends. Those points continue on and on and on forever. There are infinitely many solutions in that area. Before we actually state a solution, one other crucial thing you need to know with inequalities is that they are so different from equations. Remember, if we had two equations, this for sure would be our only solution. Okay, this point right here, where the two lines meet, right there, is actually not a solution. For this system of inequalities, that point where the two inequalities intersect at with their actual lines is not a solution. Why do you think that might be? I really want you to think about this one. Why would that not be a solution? That's not a solution because of this right here, okay? The fact that that blue line, this one right here, is dashed. Dashed means none of the points on that line are included in the solution in the same sense that I know I always use this example. If I have x is greater than 2, it means 2.1 is a solution, 2.2 is a solution, but 2 is not. So with this line, here is a solution, here is a solution, all within the shading, but the actual line itself is not included. So that point that they're intersecting at is not a solution to the blue one. It is a solution to the red line, but not the blue one. And to work with a system, it needs to work for both of them. Okay, so down here, I'm just gonna add a little note that this intersection point is not a solution because I'm gonna say the blue line is dashed. I know you guys are not using colors, so you can, instead of saying the blue line, maybe just say y is less than x plus one. Or you could just say because one of the lines is dashed. Okay, because one of the lines is dashed. Okay, that dashed line tells you it's not included, so no points on that dashed line can be a solution. So going back to here now, where we have to state a solution, it can be any point within the purple, but you're not going to pick that intersection point. All right, so any point in the purple, you pick, I'm gonna pick this point right here, just random point, which is 10, four. So my sample solution is going to be 10, 4. But again, there's infinitely many solutions here. My advice to you is to try and pick a point. See how mine's like right in the middle of the purple? You don't want to pick like this point right here because it's just too close to being on that line. And that line is not consistent with um, our solutions. So just try and pick a point. You can even go further and do like 11. You could pick a negative point down here. Any of the points within that purple area, you can go right here too. Anywhere would be a solution. There are infinitely many possibilities. Okay, now it's super important that you understand what we just went over with the intersection point not being a solution because of the dashed line. What if there were two solid lines? Okay, what if this was a less than or equal to and this was a solid line? If that was the case, this intersection point would absolutely be a solution because they're both solid and they're both included in your solutions. It's the fact that it's one dashed line. That's what tells you that that intersection point is not included. It's such a crucial point. We're gonna do it again in the next example. All right, so moving on to that next example. Actually, before we do, your code word for this video is hello. Hi. 
apparently I just wanted to say hello to you in the middle of this video. Okay, so make sure you write that down so it's ready for your quiz. And we're gonna jump into the next example. So it's the same kind of question. Number 172, solve the following system of inequalities. So I'm gonna start with the top one, which is 4x minus 6y is less than 12. So what kind of stinks about this one is it's not in that y equals mx plus b form, so we have to get it there. To get y by itself, again, I'm, I sound like a broken record, but you get rid of what's being added or subtracted first, which is that 4x. To get rid of a positive 4x, I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. So these 4x's cancel. My negative 6y comes down, my less than comes down, and I bring this down how I'd read it because they cannot be combined. It's just going to be 12 minus 4x. <clears throat> Okay, almost done getting y by itself. I need to get rid of that negative 6 because they're being multiplied. I'm going to divide everything by a negative 6. I'm going to take a second to just point this out. Any big red flags popping up in our minds right now? I'm dividing this inequality by a negative. When you divide an inequality by a negative, when solving, you have to flip the sign. So it's not a less than anymore. It is a greater than. Okay, these negative 6's cancel. And be careful when you're dividing, too. 12 divided by negative 6 is going to be a negative 2. And negative 4 divided by negative 6. What happens when you have a negative divided by a negative? A negative divided by a negative is just a positive. So this is going to be plus 4 over 6x. If you're comfortable converting that fraction down, instead of 4 sixths, you can do 2 thirds. That's entirely up to you. 4 sixths is not wrong. Okay, so that's in y equals mx plus b form, so I'm going to state what m and b are and go ahead and graph it. So m is 2 over 3. It's the number in front of x, which means I'm going to go up 2, write 3, and b is negative 2. Okay, so go ahead and graph that line. Start at negative 2, go up 2, write 3. Don't connect it. Don't make that mistake I made on the first one. I know it's so tempting. That's why we graph in pencil, by the way. Before we even move on, I do want to show you one other thing. And you might be hung up on this, so I do want to just kind of backtrack. We simplified this negative 4 over negative 6 to be a positive 2 thirds. You could have left it as negative 4 over negative 6. This is one of the only instances you're going to see a negative in the denominator. If you left it as negative 4 over negative 6, it means you rise a negative 4, which means down 4, and you run negative 6. I said always run right because... Every single thing I give you, except for this one question, will have a positive down here. But if you do happen to have a negative in the denominator, you're going to run to the left. It's the same idea as rising down. When you have a negative on your run, you're going to run left. And you'll notice that would have gotten you the same equation. If I start here at negative 2 and I go down 4, left 6, that'd be this point right here. So ultimately, you get the same graph. And then I'd go in the opposite direction, up 4, right 6. I'd be landing right here. So it would end up getting me the exact same graph. I'm just going to finish those points out right there. So no matter how you simplify it, you'll end up getting the exact same thing no matter what. If you keep it as the negatives, if you simplify it to a positive, if you leave it as 4 over 6, if you leave it as 2 over 3, no matter what, you'll end up getting the same graph. All right, now I need to connect these. So I have a greater than symbol. Greater than means I need a dashed 
line because it does not have the or equal to. So I'm going to connect that with a dashed line. Put my arrows on the end to show it goes on forever. And then you need to ask yourself whether it shades up or down. This is a greater than, so I'm going to shade up. So greater than means shade up. I'm going to shade this towards the top of the graph. If you don't like that shade up or shade down, remember you can also do the test point. That's entirely up to you. It's something we went over in the last video. And we are halfway done. <laughs> so I would really love if you feel comfortable for you to pause the video right now and give this second one a try entirely on your own. You get it in Y equals MX plus B, you find your M and B, graph it, solid, dashed, up and down, just do the whole shebang and then play it and I'll go over it. So hopefully you gave it a try on your own and you're joining me again. If not, no worries. There we go, let's fix that. I need to get this in Y equals MX plus B form. So to do that, I'm gonna start by subtracting the two X that's being added so that that'll cancel and my 2y will come down. My less than or equal to comes down and I bring this down how I read it, which is six minus two x. And the y is almost by itself. I just need to divide by two, divide by two, divide by two, so that those twos cancel. My y comes down, my less than or equal to comes down, and then I just need to divide here. So six divided by two is three, and then negative two divided by two is kind of the same situation we had in the last one. You can just leave it as negative two over two, or you can divide them. Negative two divided by two is just a negative one X. It does not make a difference. You can leave it as negative two over two, which would be down two, right two, down two, right two. Or if I simplify it to negative one, my slope will be negative one over one, which is down one, right one, down one, right one, and you'll ultimately have the exact same line. Okay, so it's really a matter of preference if you want to simplify that or not. And now I'm moving on to actually picking out my M and B and graphing it. So M is negative one over one, which means down one, right one, and B is three. Okay, so I start at three, and I go down one, right one, down one, right one. I knew that was going to happen. I could feel it coming. All right, and then I can also go up one left one to finish off my graph here. Make it nice and neat and organized so I can clearly see where my shading is and everything. And once you have all those points plotted, remember we have to consider the sign. For this one, it is a less than or equal to. So less than or equal to, the or equal to tells me it's going to be a solid line, and the less than tells me I'm going to shade down. So I'm gonna connect this with a solid line, and then shade it down. like that. Okay, so hopefully you have this exact same graph, this exact same setup and everything. What we need to talk about now is a solution. Any solution really. So this should say like a sample solution. Any like literally any solution within your um, system. So very similarly to the last one that we did, where the solutions were at that double shading. Okay, I'm just gonna state it right here that solutions are in the double shading. Okay, solutions are in the double shaded area. So really any point in that like purplish area. So I'm just gonna pick this point, just pulling a random point out. Remember, try and make it as in the middle as you can. That point's gonna be negative seven, two, the one that I picked anyway. There's infinitely many points you can choose.
All right, and then super important question here, going over what we just talked about in the last one. Is the point three, zero a solution? So three, zero, I go to where X is three and Y is zero, that's this black point right here that I'm going over right now. Okay, this right here is three, zero. Is that a solution, yes or no? Okay, the correct answer would be no. Why? Okay, it's a no because three zero falls on a dashed line. As simple as that. Any point on a dashed line is not included in your solutions. So the fact that three zero falls on this dashed line right here means it is not a solution to the system. Okay, and that's where we're going to end today's video. So if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Otherwise, good luck on your homework.